here on the underground reaction uh the first part of the video um when i started talking pretty heavily about some stuff my phone and everything started to go haywire the app everything started to go haywire you can see some of it on the screen record when i uploaded at the end it was weird i couldn't get out of my phone my phone started doing shit on its own when i started the more heavier i started getting with what i was talking about you'll see that i had to cut the, the video off because it ended up cutting it off um on its own so here's part two two uh two of uh that first talking about the uh suge's uh suge's reaction to uh keefe d being arrested here we go here's, here's part two let's see let's get into this shit now after Pac died, death row changed drastically. More than you can imagine. Dr. Dre left first, Pac died. You know, all of those things would kept us at number one. The music changed, the direction changed. You see what he said? You see what Corrupt said? Because look, Pac was in Snoop's way. Do you understand what I'm saying? Pac and Suge were in Snoop Dogg's way, Jay-Z's way, Dr. Dre's way, and Diddy's way. They had to get rid of all of them for these guys to have a career. In 1996, nobody was playing the dog father. I was rolling through the streets when I got out of jail for my little 30 day because I caught a case in 1996, right? So I ended up pleading a deal where I pleaded out. I pleaded no contest to, to my little charges. There weren't nothing major. I wasn't going to go to prison for life or nothing like that, but maybe like three, four years, whatever. It's just a little bullshit I got caught up in that I didn't do, but I didn't end up telling. So I ended up getting a little bit of time for it. Well, when I got out in 96, everywhere I went, all you heard was Pac. All you heard was Pac. You didn't hear Snoop Dogg. You didn't hear nobody playing Dr. Dre over there with the aftermath and the fucking the firm and all that. You know, with Nas and all that. What it, think about this. All of Pac's enemies ended up linking up at the end once he was out of the way. With Pac still here, I don't care. People say, oh, me and like Snoop likes to say we were tight. I know me and my homie would have been able to work it out. Bullshit. Anybody that knows Pac knows that if you don't give him what he puts out and what he gives you, he doesn't look at you as the same and he doesn't want shit to do with you because he don't fuck with motherfuckers halfway like that. Pac fucked with people 150 percent. Everybody knows that. I never met him, but from all the stuff that you hear people talking about him that did, that's what you get from it. He was a very intense individual, real as fuck on the outside and very deep, very smart. So when they got that beef from the Angie Martinez interview that Snoop did calling Biggie and Puffy his homies, that was all bullshit. And that was also a play on Snoop trying to get Biggie to think that he had no beef with him. You see, check it out. Let's, let's let this go and I'll keep going. So Snoop had to take the reins and he had to take on the challenge of holding Death Row on his back and keep going forward. I seen my cousin Snoop, man. He was like, God, he was sad, man. You know, you could hear in his voice that, you know, I don't want to be here. Nobody wants to be there. I mean, we all felt like that, you know, because we were Death Row and that's the life we was living. We felt like we was untouchable until that fatal, until that fatal day. Do you see the look on Snoop's face? Look how fucking lost and weird and scared he looks when he talks about Pox shooting. Let's run that again. Because we were death row and that's the life we was living. We felt like we was untouchable until that fatal, until that fatal day. Did you see? Look at his face. It looks so fake. My thing is Snoop, the dog pound and a lot of other people knew what was going to happen that night. That was all in play ahead of time. The thing with Baby Lane was a setup to create another alibi, so to speak, for a, another motive for a shooting, excuse me, like another motive for a shooting. But there was already people already on the fucking lookout for Pac and Suge. And they were Crips. Allegedly, this is all allegedly. 
I peep this. Getting out of death row. I mean, I always think like, yo, I could have very easily have been in that car in Las Vegas. You know what I'm saying? So fortunately for me, I left at the time that I did. Did you see that? We all love Dre. Everybody loves Dre and all this, but nobody ever calls dude out on his shit because they're afraid of him because of the power he has, the power Snoop, Jay-Z. Every, if you're a real Pac fan or just a hip hop historian, rap historian like myself that used to read all the magazines in the late from the late 90s to all the way through the uh, first 10 years of the 2000s. I, if you went to my house, I had motherfucking every month's up to date source, double XL, uh, low rider. Um, and there was a couple of other hip hop, smaller hip hop rap, uh, rap sheet and some other stuff that, um, I would have every month and they'd be on my coffee tables and you could read them. I would read them all, leave them there. Everybody could read them. I was always up on my shit, on my music and everything that was going on. Now peep this though. Do you see where I'm going with this? Everybody knows who killed or had something to do with Pac being murdered and Biggie being murdered. Suge once said, if you solve one of these murders, you'll solve both of them because they are all tied in with the same people. Do you get what I'm saying? That time Snoop and Dre were saying that this beef was out of control and that they wanted to squash it. I will be working with a lot of the artists from the East Coast. Look at Dre's face and look at the look in his eyes when he is talking about this. Come on, man. Picture's worth a thousand words. When Dre talks about this, he has like bitterness and he's just got a fucking disdain in his eyes like, fuck this, whatever. Because remember how hard Pac was going at Snoop and Dre right before he died. Just remember. A lot of the artists from the West Coast. Dre's latest release is far from squeaky clean, but it does attempt to soothe the rap's raging hardcore rivalries. The East Coast, West Coast thing, I ain't got a problem with nobody. To me, they better kill it right now, because if it keeps going on, nobody from the East Coast is going to be able to... Do you hear what he said? Because Dre had now assumed some power, because Pac is dead. Who were the first... Who... When Pac died, remember how many years it took for Snoop and Dre to come out with something? And then they came out with uh, Steel DRE. It was the smash hit on the Chronic 2001 when they made a comeback. Because up until that point, even after Pac's death, it was all Pac. All of his music took over everything. He just, he, Pac's just a different beast. You understand what I'm saying? There will never be anyone like him. It's his whole get down, all the energy, everything with that came with him. His whole life story, everything, there will never be another Pac, and it created a lot of jealousy. There was jealousy between the Dog Pound and Tupac when Tupac got there out of prison because it was no more. Nobody gave a fuck about Snoop. Nobody cared about Dog Pound. It's all whatever Tupac wants to do, whatever Pac wants to do. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Everybody knows this. Come to L.A. and be safe, and nobody from the West Coast is going to be able to come to the East Coast and be safe. I'm Snoop Dogg. I never had any beef with anybody from the East. I'm here to make good music. That's what I signed my contract to Death Row Records for, to make good music and perform and put out good albums. I you see how Snoop's night, all of a sudden, Pac's gone? Look at Snoop. Look what Snoop's doing. He's just like, I'm here to do this, I'm here to do this. Come on, man. They had to get Suge and Pac off the table so they could have a spot at the table. You get me? They could not get on that table. It was Suge and Pac's table. And whoever was fucking with Pac. And Biggie was the only other artist really holding his own at the time. When you think about it, the, the, the only other artist you really hear about at that time when it comes to music is Biggie. No one's talking about, yeah, man, when, you know, when Pac dropped all eyes on me, you know, Snoop came with it. You don't hear it? Nah, because that's not what happened. Snoop was done. Dre was done. The Dog Pound was done. Were they still been creating? Yeah, they would have been still creating shit, but Pac was another beast. Pac was just ahead of the game. Pac was light years ahead of everyone. But keep going. You follow me? I signed a contract to hurt nobody or make people hate me or hate people. It was just to make good music. Had he joined in on that shit Pac was preaching, that hatred toward the East Coast? He might not be here. I've been there. I've done that. You hear what these motherfuckers are saying? Had he been on that shit preaching that hatred to the East Coast, he might not be here. 
talking about Snoop. If it would have been like Pop preaching the hate. But see, Snoop was allegedly had had been trying to get big when Big and Puff were in L.A. was trying to get Big to go meet up with him to smoke with him and all that. But Eugene Eugene Deal, Diddy's ex bodyguard, said many fucking podcasts and interviews and in his book said straight up that Snoop Dogg is a liar because he was there with Big the whole time Big was in California and that Big was telling him he didn't trust Snoop and he didn't want to meet up with him that Snoop was calling the publicist or or people that they knew down there that he knew down there trying to get a hold of Big to see where he was at because he wanted to come smoke with him and Biggie's words to to Eugene Deal the ex-bodyguard of P. Diddy and, and at the end Biggie uh, you know that he had been telling him that, you know, that, hold on, I'm out here outside, I'm kind of, is that a fucking dog right there? <laughs> but Eugene Deal had said many, many times in his podcast and stuff that, you know, that, that Diddy and and uh, Snoop and, well, Diddy and, and, and uh, Biggie being in L.A., that Biggie did not want to be there and, and that when Snoop was trying to like fucking hook up with him and trying to find out where he was at, he was uncomfortable about that. Biggie kept saying, oh, he, he remembers what I did in New York. So he's going to, he, I don't trust him. He's going to backdoor me. Basically is what Eugene Deal said that Biggie was telling him, you know, not in those words. I'm not, you know, hitting it verbatim, but to that effect, he didn't want nothing to do with him. He didn't trust him. And he thought he was trying to get him set up. That was what Biggie was telling Eugene Deal about Snoop Dogg. So... Snoop Dogg likes to put in the media that he was cool with Biggie. That was his homeboy. Man, Puffy. No, no, no. Puffy was your homeboy. Because both of you had an equal fucking enemy, which was Suge Knight and Tupac. Kind of funny. Kind of funny how it works out, right? So I'm going to go this route. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, Dre. This did not sit well with Suge because Snoop would not take his side in this beat. Snoop tried to stay neutral and Suge demanded loyalty. Suge demanded loyalty for everything he did for Snoop, getting him off on that shooting of Philip Baldwin Merriam back when Snoop's career was starting. Now, you guys know that Suge paid a lot of money and there was a lot of shit that was done for evidence to come up missing at the evidence room in the L.A. fucking PD uh, locker room or evidence room. You know, that's not Snoop being innocent. That's people pulling strings to get him off. That's what Suge did for motherfuckers. So when he didn't get loyalty from Snoop, it hurt him a lot. It hurt him a lot because he had put everything out there for Snoop. He pulled every string for him. And at the end of the day, Snoop turned on him because he had to side with Dre. The reason he had to side with Dre is because they both had a common enemy, which was fucking Pac. So it was easy for them to all link up and say that we're going against them. How come nobody can fucking see this shit, how it turned out? You cannot have what happened now without fucking Easy dead, without Biggie and Pac dead. You would not have the foundation the way it is now. Snoop Dogg owning Death Row again. You know, you got Diddy over there. You got Jay-Z over there. You got Dre over there. You would not have this. It would be roughly very, very different. Understand this. Pac would be the biggest mogul. Easy right there. Come on. And then you would have a little bit on the lower on the totem pole, you'd have Dre and Snoop and all that because everything was taking a shift. And this had to happen to Pac for the shift to stop taking place and get them guys off the table. So now they could sit at the table and eat because if those guys were still alive, they were not going to be able to eat comfortably the way they wanted. Can anybody see it? Or am I the only motherfucker that can see this? Because Ryan with us. Are they riding the guests? Ain't no in between. Either you with us or our guests. Those are not with us. Nothing. Snoop was growing wary of Suge Knight in this time. There were rumors that Suge had something to do with Tupac's death. Snoop believed this and started taking precautions. For Snoop said that. Snoop's the one that started that narrative, by the way. Himself. This has been another Underground Reaction. I'm going to sign off. Like, share, subscribe. Tell me what you think. What do you guys think? Put it in the comments. Peace.